What if the sweetness you taste in your favorite drink isn't coming from sugar at all, but from a smell your brain reads as flavor? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're unpacking new evidence showing how your brain interprets aromas as taste, why food goes flat when you're congested, and how you can use this science to make smarter choices at the table. I'm Alara Sky. You'll hear how retronasal smell, the odors rising from your mouth as you chew, merges with taste to create flavor. We'll walk through findings from Karolinska Institutet in Sweden, where functional MRI revealed that sweet-linked aromas can activate the same taste processing regions as sugar itself. Let's start with the core distinction. Orthonasal smell is what you get when you sniff the air to detect what's around you. Retronasal smell is different. It's the airflow from your mouth to your nose while you eat. Without retronasal input, you register only five basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, umami, rather than the full experience you think of as flavor. In the featured study, 25 healthy adults learned to match sweet and savory through specific combinations of taste and smell. During scanning sessions, participants were presented with isolated inputs, sometimes only an aroma, sometimes only a taste, so researchers could see how the brain handled each signal on its own. An algorithm trained on brain activity patterns for sweet and savory taste became the test. Could those same patterns be recognized when only aromas were delivered? The answer was yes. Sweet-associated aromas like vanilla or strawberry produced activation maps that closely resembled real sugar. The most striking overlap appeared in the insula, your brain's taste cortex. That's important because it means the insula isn't just receiving taste from your tongue. It responds directly to certain odors learned to signal sweetness. This is early integration, not a late add-on. And it explains why a sugar-free drink with a sweet aroma can feel sweet to you. Flavor construction doesn't end in the insula. The orbitofrontal cortex, which evaluates reward and helps guide decisions, also contributes. You sense a unified flavor quickly, then higher order regions assign value. Is this pleasurable, satisfying, or worth seeking again? That chain influences cravings and repeat choices. Everyday life shows the difference between taste and flavor. When you have a cold and your nose is blocked, retronasal airflow shuts down. Food still has basic taste, but the layered flavor disappears. The experience feels dull, not because your tongue stopped working, but because aroma signals never reach the olfactory receptors that complete the picture. Now to the practical question many people ask. Can smells make foods taste sweeter without adding sugar? the data indicate they can shape your perception. When the smell matches a learned sweet profile, the insula's response mimics sugar. You feel sweetness even though your calorie and glucose load do not change. That mismatch between perception and nutrition cuts both ways. Food developers can reduce added sugars by pairing products with sweet-linked aromas. You can find sugar-free flavored waters or low-sugar yogurts that still taste sweet because the aroma drives that impression but your metabolism still responds only to actual nutrients, not to scent. A simple at-home test makes this visible. Take a jelly bean or mint. Pinch your nose firmly and start chewing. You'll notice a generic sweet taste, but little character. Release your nose while chewing, and the flavor appears almost at once. That jump isn't a trick. It's retronasal smell finally reaching your olfactory receptors and completing the flavor code. Understanding this integration helps you interpret cravings. If a vanilla scent primes the taste cortex to expect sweetness, you may feel driven to eat more of a food that delivers that combined signal. Recognizing that pattern can help you step back and decide whether you want the perception of sweet or the actual sugar that often follows. It also reframes why some products feel satisfying with less sugar. When a familiar sweet aroma is present, your brain reads sweetness early and robustly. Used deliberately, this can help you cut added sugar without feeling deprived. Used carelessly, it can blur satiety cues and pull you toward overeating because the reward circuits light up first. Let's zoom in on the brain map one more time. 
The insula integrates taste and smell early, generating a shared, flavor-specific neural code. The orbitofrontal cortex weighs that code against past experience and reward. Together, they explain why you can taste sweetness from an aroma and why your choices can shift even when chemistry hasn't. Keep the terminology clear as you apply this. Taste is the limited input from your tongue. Flavor is the constructed output your brain builds by combining taste with retronasal smell. When retronasal pathways are blocked during a cold or when you pinch your nose, flavor collapses back to simple taste. What should you do with this knowledge today? If you're working to reduce added sugar, consider choosing foods and drinks that use sweet-associated aromas to maintain satisfaction while keeping sugar lower. Read labels to confirm the actual sugar content, and remember that aroma changes perception, not metabolism. You can also try the one-minute demonstration with a family member. Run the nose pinch test together and compare notes. The immediate change in flavor makes the concept memorable and turns an abstract idea into a concrete experience you can use the next time you reach for something sweet. As you experiment, pay attention to how aromas influence portions. If a strong sweet scent makes a low sugar option feel satisfying, that's a useful tool. If it triggers more snacking, step back and reassess. The goal is to let perception work for you, not to let it nudge you into eating more than you intend. Here's your practical challenge. Over the next three days, replace one sugary item with a lower sugar version that uses a sweet associated aroma, such as vanilla flavored water or yogurt, and run the nose pinch test once to feel the difference between taste and flavor. Notice whether you stay satisfied and how your cravings respond. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.